We're out here with our shot putters and we're gonna go over three key factors that you can use to prepare for a big comp. And we're gonna start right now. Okay, so when we're preparing for a big comp, one of the biggest things that a lot of high school kids struggle with, a lot of the collegiate kids struggle with, is how do they approach that big meet? Let's say you're a week out, you're 10 days out. Taman right now, Rachel, they are about 10 days out. Actually, they're about seven and eight days out from US indoors. So one of the things that we can do, we've got to base our training around what we're going to be doing on that exact day. And so we have to dial in a couple key factors when we're prepping for that big meet. That way, when we get into that meet setting, we're a lot more comfortable. We know exactly how things are gonna roll. And if things don't roll that exact way, we know how we can pivot in that situation. So we're gonna go over those three key tips. And that first key tip is that you have to know your warmups. One of the biggest errors that I see, even with coaches, is that one day they'll have a warmup that's like this, you know, warmup A, then the next day they have warmup B. So they don't know what their exact warmup is going to be. And one of the biggest things that you see with the best in the entire world, when you're at the World Championships, this past year in Hungary, you could see a precisely planned out warm up by the best throwers in the entire world. So what we do here is we say, okay, we're gonna warm up, we're gonna take three stands, we're gonna take five to seven drill throws, okay? Like a little bit of a drill, a little bit of a throw, and then we're gonna get into those throws. But understanding that progression, and then as we get closer to the meet, we're gonna say, all right, we're gonna take maybe one stand, maybe one drill throw, and then go right into those full throws. So that's that first key concept, is that we have to understand what that warm up entails. I would go even deeper and say that that warm up isn't even what we're doing out here in the circle, but also what are you doing for the hour prior? What music are you gonna be listening to? What cues or visualization are you gonna be rolling through? And what mobility positions are you gonna work on to try to open everything up, get that heart rate going, get that sweat going before you actually step into the circle and really try to dial those rituals in before you get into that big comp. Okay, that second key aspect is gonna be understand your technical cues and coaches out there. When we have technical cues, I think in practice, if you have two or three, that's okay. Ideally, it will be about two technical cues, okay? When we get closer to a comp, I believe it should be one or two max, okay? So when you're warming up, you can work through, maybe there's three cues that you're just pounding when you're warming an athlete up. When they get into the actual meet though, it's only one or two specific cues. And what we need to do in our preparation is actually communicate that with the athletes. So with Rachel right now, it's keep that left heel higher, cut the right leg to the middle. If that happens, she'll have a better middle position and she's gonna slam the finish. With Taman, we know that right now, he's gotta open and keep that right foot grounded as long as possible. That's gonna help him get wider out of the back. Then he's gonna catch that middle a little bit more and he's gonna murder that finish. So it's actually keep that right leg grounded longer out of the back, have a fast left leg. Now these are gonna be basic templates, okay? So of these cues, we might have a grander cue model where we have longer discussions that's more abstract. We discuss all these things, we go through why we wanna focus on this. But then in the actual setting, the technical cue is one or two precise pieces of verbiage that they can hear, they know what they're trying to do, and they immediately can try to apply that. And so that's why it's important to understand those technical cues when we're getting to that big comp. Oh, wire, like keep that right down longer out of the back. Yeah, that was good. Now, finally, that third key aspect is that we have to understand the speed of competition. There's a couple ways that we can do this. One of the things that I know Tom Walsh has talked about is that he likes to compete a lot because he gets that competitive speed from frequent competition. So it's almost like he uses competitions as practice towards gearing up for that big major event. In the case of our athletes, we've only had two indoor meets. You know, the indoor competitive season is a lot shorter here in the United States. It ends middle of February. So in our case, what we ended up doing is we're gonna go into an actual training session and try to establish that mock meet. Okay, so if we have a mock meet, now we can get into that competition mindset and try to focus on, okay, let's have a brief period of warmups, but focus on technical cues and then have six throws that we try to save, but we're going fast. We want to hit that. And not only is that going to help with our overall speed, but it's also going to help with having a little bit more fun, bringing a little bit more energy, a little bit more intensity to that practice session. And I think this is a real big concept and it also enables you to have practice time on your warmups 
and have practice time on those technical cues. If you're working through a mock meet and you notice that a specific warm up or a specific cue isn't working great for you, what you can end up doing then is taking that step back, have another mock meet or another high intensity training session, and you can alter that and make it a little bit more effective. So make sure that you use these three tips. Remember, we've got to go back, we've got to establish that warm up. We have to establish what that warm up looks like in a competitive setting. The second thing, know those technical cues, know the abstract reason, but then ultimately have one or two terms that you're using to hit those cues in a training session. And finally, make sure that you're focusing on having fun by slamming some big time throws in a mock meet type setting. That's gonna help you guys hit some monster bombs. If you guys need help with your training, head over to peakstrength.app and you can get into our throws-based training inside of our app. If you want some technical analysis, head over to throwsuniversity.com because remember, you've got to take some reps if you wanna drop some bombs. Peace.